personality, very interesting personality. Hope that you are witnessing from the morning, the first session onwards, Lord Shiv has arrived here. And Lord Shiv is very interested in having an interaction with you. And this session is not going to be the session where the speaker is going to be in the stage. Lord Shiv is going to come down on the stage and going to interact with you all. And this for this session, Lord Shiv is going to take or going to discuss about something different other than a usual practice or advocacy, but the importance of uh, reading books and create, uh, building a character. We are very happy to invite Honorable Justice Mr. N. Anand Venkatesh, Judge High Court of Madras, and a small profile about Justice Lord Shiv. Lord Shiv came from Chennai, who studied in St. Mary's School at Paramore and did his UG in uh, AM Jain College, Minabaka and BL at Dr. Ambedkar Law College, Chennai. Lord Shiv enrolled in uh, uh, Bar Council in 1993 and joined the office of the Senior Counsel, Mr. B. Ramamurthy, and was practicing with the Senior Counsel till 1997 onwards. Till 1997, Lord Shiv started his own independent career and started to take cases. These were the uh, terms and phrase used by Lord Shiv in his own profile. As a first generation lawyer, and therefore had to take up whatever the cases came my way. As a result, I picked up all ground practice in original site, appellate site, criminal site, entered jurisdiction before the Honorable High Court. Also, Lordship appeared before the various service matters on the CAT and uh, all other subordinate court. On various occasions, Lordship has been appointed as amicus curiae by the High Court uh, for both civil and criminal cases. We welcome uh, Lordship. Uh, this is P.P. Balaji, who is the next resource person. Lord Shiv also arrived here. Thank you, Lord Shiv, for our presence. And Lord Shiv, uh, Lord Shiv this is Anand Mepres, who has published various articles in various law journals. And uh, he had an opportunity as a contact person for Tamil Nadu Judicial Academy and taking classes for newly appointed subordinate court judges. And Lord Shiv has taken part in various consultation and drafting committee. And out of his suggestion, where the enactment of Commercial Court, Commercial Division and Commercial Appellate, uh, Appellate Division of the High Court Act 2015 has came out. Lordship used to take keen interest in sports, particularly cricket, where Lordship has played up to senior division connected by Tamil Nadu Cricket uh, Association. And he is a uh, very good music lover and reading books on various topics. Lordship, thank you so much for your uh, uh, coming over here. And, uh, and the topic itself is something interesting. Stopping blocks are the real character builders. Lordship, now the floor is open to you. Morning to you all. Good. So when I was given this sheet by the organizers, I found that uh, everybody is going to bore you with some academics. So in a movie, apart from the hero, you must have a comedian, correct? <laughs> Only then, even if it is a serious movie and uh, it has a comedian in it, it brings that interest in you. So to give you that energy to withstand the other academicians, starting from my brother Justice Balaji, <coughs> and uh, it is going to continue till the evening. I thought I'll pitch in and um, give you certain tips which I have followed uh, in my life and which will help you. So, thank you so much for the organizers for uh, inviting me and it is always a great pleasure to address students because I get down and engaged when I see you all. So, the energy level pops up when I see students and that's why I said I will not stand here, I will not say that good morning, this is the topic which we are going to enter into. I know that you don't like all those things. So I let me get into your shoes and think from your side and tell you something interesting. So the first undertaking I want is that you must give an undertaking that you will not touch your mobile phone till I complete. Do I get that undertaking? Because during the previous session, I saw many very busily going through your messages in the mobile phone. That is always there. So, you have come here for a purpose. 
please ensure that you gain some knowledge, you gain some experience, you gain some confidence before you leave this hall and go back to your regular work. So, I hope that all of you are final year students, right? It's, it's uh, third year, fourth year, fifth year, everything is here, correct? Fine, very good. The more young you are, the more I am happy. Because it's only the youngsters who can be changed. These old people, they will never change and it's a waste of time. So, the, the topic which I have chosen here is communication, the, no, the stumbling blocks are the real character builders, is what I, is the topic which I have chosen. Now can you lift your hand? Slightly higher. Good. So, there is a natural tendency for us to contain ourselves, to be in a safe zone. When I requested the organizers to request you to come to the front bench, there was so much of resistance. You were able to see, I intentionally did it. I intentionally did it because what I am going to say will start from something which actually happened to know. When I asked you to raise your hand, to begin with, there are only a few hands which you are raising. The others saw that, okay, the next person has raised, okay, I will also do it. Then it was only this, our hand does not stop here. It goes up and up and up and it goes up to this place. What is preventing us from doing this? What is preventing us is that there is a natural tendency for us not to get out of comfort zone. You are all today in a very comfort zone because you are taken care by your parents. The food is ready when you go back home. You are, you are provided for your education. There is somebody to help you. It's a careless life and I love this life actually. This is the best part of your life and after you come out of it, you will see the other side of it and that's what I want to address to all of you. So, friends, the first thing is that we all have a comfort zone for us and we do not want to come out of that comfort zone. How do you say it? It was demonstrated now in 5-10 minutes. When I asked everybody to come to the front, everybody was looking at whether the other person will go to the front and I will retain the back bench. Why? Nothing is going to happen. I am not going to ask you questions on constitution. You can be very sure about it. Just because you attended a constitution lecture now, I am not going to say what is article 51 AJ. That's not what I am going to do. In spite of it, in spite of me not intending to do that, there was hesitation. There was hesitation for what? For just raising the hand. Which means, we have this natural tendency to stay safe. To be inside a bubble is the word that is used. To be in a comfort zone. I'm telling you, life starts only, only when you break that bubble. Only when you get out of your comfort zone. Life starts there. If you don't get out of the comfort zone, there is no scope for any progress in life. So this is the first thing which I wanted to say and I wanted to do it with a demonstration. I didn't want to embarrass you by asking you to come and sit in the front. In any case, I would, I would be looking at the faces, I would be looking at people who are attempting to take out the mobile phone. All that I will be continuously watching. But since you have given an undertaking, I will not get into that exercise now. Fine. Now uh, let me tell a story of uh, a boy who comes from North Madras. North Madras consists of Karambur, Vyasarpadi, Vannarapetai, Rayaburam. These are areas which were considered to be labor areas. Labor areas are where people used to come and work in factories. So that was an area which was always considered to be backward. So the boy was brought up there and this boy was horrible in his academics. 
to even pass in one subject is a big problem for that boy. But what came to his aid was his handwriting. He had such a horrible handwriting that the teachers will not be able to take it for more than a year. Therefore, they were forced to promote this boy to the next class just to, to avoid his handwriting. And somehow or other this boy managed to be promoted from one class to another for no merits at all because this boy used to get single digit marks in some of the subjects. Then he was a single boy. He had no competition. He had no brothers, sisters, nothing. So he was in a comfort zone with his parents. They were taking care of him and they were praying all the gods in the earth to somehow ensure that this boy at least gets some job in future. He at least completes some graduation somewhere. So they were very, very anxious about the future of this boy. And slowly this boy was growing. And at a particular stage, he started liking a sport. He took very serious, keen interest on that sport. Even there, he went only to a particular level. Thereafter, his comfort zone did not allow him to move any further. He thought that if he moves any further, he will be exposed because his talents are not matching what is required for a sportsman to achieve at that level. So the boy stopped in the sense that he did not want to break that comfort level. So he stopped with a particular level of sport. Then. That boy entered into a college. He never properly attended the college. Every year he was paying the condemnation fees and somehow managing to scrape through. Then this boy got into a law college. When this boy got into the law college, some virus got into him. That virus slowly gave him a lot of confidence to pursue with the course. Probably this is as a result of what all the parents were struggling with the God to show some light to this boy, for him to survive in this world. So this boy get in, gets into the college, manages to do slightly well, and then the boy comes out of the college. There was there were so many things that were told to him in the college. This constitution, this fundamental rights, uh, the, the, the earnings of the senior advocates, the respect which you get in the society as an advocate. So many things were told to this boy. And suddenly when this boy came out of the college, it was like getting into a sea. And this boy does not know to swim. So he was struggling. On the one hand, the sea was pulling him down. On the other hand, he had to somehow survive. The boy survived. The boy on many occasions broke that bubble, broke that barrier, broke that comfort zone. And the, the boy whom I am referring to is the boy who is standing right in front of you as the gentleman. Am I trying to trumpet my own life? Is it some self-glorification which I am doing? No. I am not doing that. I always try to tell this story to youngsters because youngsters don't think that you please do not have an impression that it's the brilliant people who alone will be able to thrive in this profession. No. There are people with mediocre abilities like me who can also thrive in this profession, who can also become, if he has a luck, to be a judge of this world. So, what is important is what I was trying to drive through this story. What did I do? The stumbling blocks about which uh, the, the, the title is, stumbling blocks are the ones which builds your character, right? So, these stumbling blocks is one, you are in a comfort zone today because you are taken care by your parents. 
you are in a comfort zone because you don't have a commitment to fulfill. The only thing that is expected of you today is just sit and study, have good habits, try to pass and get into something which you like. So today you are in a bubble and even there, there are lots of comfort zones which you have built for yourself. If I am to ask somebody to come here, hold the mic and speak, which I would never have even imagined that I could do at that point of time. If somebody had called me, I would have run out of the hall. There was no way I would have even come anywhere near this stage. So, you are in a comfort zone and you are going, your comfort zone is going to be broken now. The bubble is going to burst and you are going to be dropped into Bay of Bengal, the sea, not some small pool, well or a river, it's the sea into which you are going to be dropped. So what are the stumbling blocks about which we are referring to is the important question. So you think that you are reading certain uh, the theories like the transfer of property, the civil procedure court, the Hindu law, constitution, etc, etc. And you think that uh, this is uh, something which is going to provide you the bread and butter immediately after you come out of the college. Just underline the word immediately after you come. After you come out of the college and get into that premises, that red, great red building, and when you get into the court, you will find that you and the clerk who is working in that office of the senior are placed in the same position. In fact, the clerk will be in a better position. Can you believe it? You are now students of law. You are all thinking that as students of law, you have so much of knowledge in law. I am not trying to deny you that. But when you are put into a place where you are not exposed at all, where you are putting that into operation, there you suddenly find that you have forgotten everything and something else is happening. You don't even understand what a counsel is saying, what a judge is asking. There is no coherence at all. You are not able to understand what is happening. It's not something like what comes in movies. The, the movie thing, anybody will say, my lord, your honor, anybody will cross-examine anybody at any point of time, and suddenly one person will be running in and he will be giving evidence to the judge. All that never happens in reality. None of these things happens in the reality. So, you don't understand what is happening in the court. So, the first stumbling block is, am I suitable to this place? Will I be able to do anything at all here? Will be the very first question. Before getting into that, how many of you are intending to first practice? Maximum hand lifted. Not this. It must be this. How many of you are intending to practice? Somebody is, is lifting like this, which means maybe, may not be. Confidently tell me how many of you are going to practice. Be, be more uh, honest to yourself. Don't satisfy me here. I do not know why would you consult somebody and say, no, practice, you, you don't do that. You, you must be confident with what you are doing. The next boy is sitting next to you. He thinks that, uh, why is he asking me? I am myself in confusion. So, okay. So, this is this is the crowd which is going to find. How many of you are going to get into corporates? Okay. How many of you are going to get into academics? Meaning somebody said, Academics. Okay. How many of you don't intend to get anywhere near law? <coughs> Business. Fine. Good. That honesty is very important. It's not, it, it, it's not that uh, that uh, you have to, it's not going to help you in life, right? 
okay so in so far as people who are going to i am going to address or focus it to people who are intending to get into law and also generally the stumbling blocks the comfort zones which you may have to break now after completing your course the first stumbling block is what am i going to do is the first stumbling block unless you are very sure unless the next person is trying to pull your hands and say at least idha kai dogan so the first stumbling block is what am i going to do correct correct sir correct fine second stumbling block is having decided to practice will i be able to survive here will i be able to thrive here is the next question correct when the client and nambi case ko who will who is going to come to me and give it correct you, you cannot imagine and it's not like some kada maliga kada you can believe somebody will grocery shop somebody will enter into at least buy something half a kilo one kilo what is the assurance that a client is going to come to you so that's the stumbling block that's three age is increasing responsibility is slowly dawning at you you have to earn how do i earn who is going to pay me because many senior advocates don't pay they may not like what i am saying but that's the truth so that's the third thing which is coming how am i going to focus on law and also look take care of my livelihood is another stumbling block which is coming then as things progress our school friends would have got into some job and they will be earning every month they would have taken some other course they will be earning the parents will say paathala avanga sambharika aarambichitaanga they have started earning and what is that you are doing parents may not understand this profession at all correct so that's a huge stumbling block because question is coming from a person who is actually protecting you correct till then the parents are protecting you and the and the and the question is coming from their meaning they will not straight away say it in so many words they will say that <coughs> so that's the next question which is coming then advocates as such don't have so much of respect in the society for so many reasons i don't want to get into that which means that if you want to get into an office first a senior's office who is going to take you to that office who is going to show you that this is the person with whom you have to work an element of luck works there but then you have to learn the trick of the trade law is there but how are you going to do it in the court no book will teach you it is only a senior who will teach you it is only an experience which will teach you it is only your keen observation that happens in the court which will teach you as to what how you will perform in a court which means the next step is who is going to do that for me is the next question which comes then i continue i continue for some time two years gone three years gone senior starts giving indication as to whether you want to go independent then you want to go independent to go independent you need an office who is going to lease a building to an advocate does anyone have the confidence to lease a building to an advocate i don't know so that's the next stumbling block that you so you have to somehow manage a practice you have to somehow find a place and you start it fine then comes this marriage problem at least girls you are lucky somebody will marry you <laughs> the the i come to that issue later after this boys very difficult you will not get a break nobody is confident with advocates so far as girls are concerned there may be fear factor for the person who wants to marry them because vitla la pesa mishta kashma that's an issue 
Correct? So, in any case, marrying a lawyer, marrying a person belonging to this profession is not a smooth affair. Unless you adopt my method of marrying a lawyer. <laughs> Just to get hold of a lawyer, marry the lawyer. Finished. That is also not very easy. But at least there is a good chance that you have a family life. Correct? So, I was, so these are many, many, many things, stumbling blocks which are staring at us. My friends, these stumbling blocks stared at every one of us sitting here. And particularly for the boy whom, about whom I was referring earlier, that boy only got 750 rupees during his marriage as stipend from his senior. And the person whom I was marrying was getting 750 rupees. So, 1500 rupees was what was available at that point of time. There is no other protection or financial help etc. which was coming forth because the marriage was happening against the wishes of the family. That is the scenario where I was placed. And it will be in for every person, it will be the challenge will be quite different. But the challenge will remain, particularly for the first generation lawyers. Because it is like what I said in the beginning, throwing you into a sea. You don't know. But what is that will enable you to break that bubble? What is that will enable you to come out of that comfort zone. You are 120 kilos. Huge. Narakam All sorts of things are happening. If you are to break it, you have to get up in the morning. You have to do exercise. You have to consciously burn your fat. You have to consciously be careful on what you eat. And suddenly one day you see that you have reduced by 40-45 kilos. Right? How did that happen? It's a very painful experience. Everything is painful from the mind point of view because for the mind, any challenge that is put to it, it will resist. The first thing which happens to the mind, the natural tendency of the mind is resistance only. But no, I why should I get? For 5 o'clock alarm, switch it off 7 o'clock. Why all that is happening? There is a comfort zone into which you are all living. And for even a small thing at a physical level, I am talking about something physical. I was born very fat. And I was very fat during my school days. And at that point of time, this body shaming was more. Today, I am very happy that youngsters don't get involved into body shaming to the extent to which it was happening at that point of time. Every person who crosses me will say, in which shop are you buying rice? So, continuously people were hammering it on me. What did I do? To come out of it, I started indulging or involving myself in a sport. Slowly that became a habit. And today, out of seven days, Six days in a week, I do physical fitness. Six days in a week, I do physical fitness with all the work. With all the work that I have done. Sometimes it will become very difficult because you will be going to bed at 11, 11.30. You will have to get up because you will have to come to court. Break that comfort zone. Keep on breaking, breaking, breaking. If you continuously keep breaking comfort zones, you are bound to succeed in whatever you are taking. So, if that is in the physical level, what is that happens at the professional level? I always used to say that our profession has four stages. First stage is there is no work and no money. You have to keep on observing what is happening around you. Second stage is only work, no money. 
So out of four, in two stages, no money. Unless you resort to other activities to earn money. I am not talking about persons like that. I am talking about persons who want to have sterling character, who wants to have conviction in life, who wants to have lead a life of real character and by following what is right and avoiding what is wrong. I am addressing persons like that. I am not trying to address persons who think that hanky panky they earn something. For that, this, this whole thing uh, they waste. You don't need to come at all. In any case, you have, if you have decided that, all this is a waste of time. So, I am sure that everyone who has come here wants to lead a correct, clean life. Correct? So, the, the second stage I said was, only work, no pay. The third stage is, work, pay. Whatever you work, you will get paid, you will get the earnings. Fourth stage is, even if you don't work, people will come and give you money. You will reach, reach such a stage. So there are basically these four stages in the life of uh, an advocate. Today, the scenario is that the junior advocates are going to seniors and putting conditions. It used to be the other way around. I am telling you this because that's the feedback I am getting from the seniors who want to genuinely help junior advocates. In our days, there will be no talk about the, the stipend and all that. Well, so much you will have to pay, nothing like that. The senior will not say, junior will not ask, something will be given uh, in the beginning of that month and you will not even be able to look at it. The senior will be keeping on looking at you. He must. He will see to that. You, you are not getting unnecessarily attached to that. So some some pittance will be given, and you don't fix timings. Senior fixes timings. So most of us entered office at seven in the morning, and you used to get over at eleven in the night, ten o'clock in the night. There are instances where I have missed the bus, and I have gone in cycle and all. So, that breaking of the comfort zone does not come easily. It comes with a lot of effort which you have to put. So, today what is happening is that immediately after the junior gets into the office of the senior, you all go begin. First question. First question which you should never ask a senior is, you all go begin. The firm thing I will come later. I am now talking about individual practitioners. You should not ask that at all. Because I am telling it from my heart that if you really genuinely strive hard in this profession, money will flow at you. Now, you can pay for money. I am a first generation lawyer. I don't need to lie with you. Because I have come from very, very ordinary background with very limited uh, mental capabilities and all that. But I am telling you with all uh, uh, seriousness, honesty, from my heart, that money will flow at you. So please do not look at money at all. That's my first request to all of you. Please do not start with money factor. If you start with money factor, to a great extent it waters down. <coughs> if you can ask me then what, is, what happens to my livelihood, you are right. You are right, but you are getting into a very special profession here. You are not getting into some employment. Employment, yes, you will have the right to ask for this much of wages, this much of salary. You are getting into a stage where you are learning. You, you learn with your senior. And it involves doing work also. So it's a learning process. How many people pay you for learning? You pay and learn. Here it's the ulta. You learn and also get paid. Other punjab, please keep in mind. If you think that you must pay me this, then what you are doing is you are getting into the lawyer's office and asking something like an employment. No. There is no employment. Senior junior relationship is not employer employee relationship. It is not master servant relationship. It is a perfect relationship of a guru and a disciple. That is how it is. So you are in a learning process. Therefore, your focus is not on the money. 
it is on the learning it is on the learning then second is seniors today are willing to pay you a decent amount that is the truth i am talking with lot of seniors and they say that if they really come and work we are willing to pay 10000 rupees 15000 rupees one senior said i give 25000 rupees it is unimaginable when i marry what was i given adu nyavachu 750 rupees nyavachu you cannot say unga 750 was great 2000 uh, 1997 750 was not great at all it was horrible 150 rupees even at that point of time was not a was not an amount with which you could sustain and all that so the money factor don't make it as a condition precedent the seniors are willing to pay you and if, if you think that you can really learn from an office but you are not getting the money which you desire to don't bother about it don't care about it if you get into money factor that you will be getting into offices of hanky panky business frank the solution for the problem not everybody who is earning in this profession is earning it with honesty i find that people who have just put in 2 years practice are seniors with 5 juniors for you impossible 2 years if somebody has purchased a car somebody has built up a big office he has every facility i am very wary about how he earned that money it does not come that easily i have to honestly tell you this so don't go by what car he is having or what type of house no no all that is not it. what is important is to focus on how much you can learn from an office how much you can learn from a senior that's the most important thing because you are joining a senior not for employment you are joining a senior for learning underlying that work then after that happens the driving force to remain in this profession you know na ipo solla poradam the most important thing which you all must cultivate you must have passion you must love what you are doing please do not do anything which you do not love passion driven illama don't do anything because it is very very painful very painful then you will start the talking about retirement at the age of 40 45 i have seen so many people talk about retirement at the age of 40 why because they don't like what they are doing even though they are earning tons of money so much of money they are earning 40 they say i want to go and do farming that's the latest trend now everybody wants to go and do farming i do not know how many people are really doing it at least they are saying it outside i i want to go and do this in the farming is organic farm organic organic farm so this this uh, 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 what i was trying to tell you is that passion you have to have tremendous passion passion builds you that energy today is a saturday why am i coming here and talking either i can go and dictate some judgment or i can sleep till 8 9 o'clock or i can go to amazon netflix watch a movie why should i come here why am i addressing you because i have so much of passion for this for this profession and for the youngsters that i think this is the most important thing to do than anything else <laughs> therefore to hear it from somebody who comes from uh, an office or who comes from uh, a place where there he already had an office his father was an advocate etc even for them you can be in the shadow of your father you can be in the shadow of anybody only up to a particular time thereafter you have to prove yourself probably for them the starting point is more comfortable than a first generation lawyer they already have an office they already have some clientele so the starting point is fine they can they can they need not break their head on 
what is going to happen, who is going to all fine. But that is for a very short time. If you don't prove yourself, the client will go to somebody else. You cannot say, I am so and so's son. I am so and so's, I'm coming, I mean, I'm coming from so and so's. They will say, okay, that's fine. If you don't know, if you have not so, even if you are in an advantageous position, even if you are in an advantageous position, that will not help you at a longer run. You have to anyway put in that hard work. So, the best way to do that hard work is to have a lot of passion in which you are doing. If you have passion, that's one easy way to come out of the comfort zone. Correct? If you fall in love with somebody, you don't feel like eating, you don't feel like sleeping, you are not very comfortable, you keep on staring. Why all that is happening? You are so passionate about the person whom you are loving. That's the easiest example I can give. Because I have undergone all that. Therefore, I am telling you all this. So, why all that is happening? Why is it that you are able to watch a movie for two and a half hours? And you don't even know that two and a half hours has already gone. Why? Same time, nah, they are under minna, nah. you are made to sit here for two and a half hours. Nobody in this hall. But you will have to sit, no mobile phone. No book, no nothing. Will you be able to sit for two and a half hours? So there is a difference here. There is a difference here. The same two and a half hours which was moving like some decades, just vanished in a second. Why? Because your mind was so engrossed with what you are watching or what you are doing. Sometimes you paint. You don't know that five hours has gone. Sometimes you read a novel. You don't know that three hours has already gone. How is all that happening? Because you get so engrossed with what you are doing, that amount of engrossment must happen in this profession. Are you willing to do that? Ippa kaitu. All those who said they want to practice. Then each one of you who had who had raised their hand now, either you will become senior advocates or judges of the high court and supreme court. If you want to earn money, earn money. No problem. Don't torture yourself by becoming a judge like me. Be happy. Enjoy life. At the end of the day, what is success? What according to you is success? Becoming a high court judge? Buying two BMW cars? Becoming a chief justice? I'm sorry. Success is, you must feel happy with what you're doing. You must really feel happy with what you're doing. cooks and provides food for the inmates of the house. If she thinks that what she is doing, she is so passionate about it and she gives the food, she will be the happiest person in the world. Correct? When an order is passed by a judge and it goes and reaches, it benefits a ordinary kupusami who has no other source, who has no other means. But this order has brought him a compensation. This order has brought back the job which he lost. This order has brought him out of a criminal case, which a crime which he did not commit. And if that happens to him, it's not as if every case you are looking at whether he is happy or I am not trying to say that. But at the end of the day, you know. I am telling you, my friends, there can be no happiness more than that. No happiness more than that. For an advocate, when you win a case for a farmer, for a small landowner who has a small property and you have ensured that he got it, or a breadwinner dies, the family is suffering, you have got them a compensation in a motor vehicles case, or the land has gone, you are getting compensation for them from the state under the Land Acquisition Act. 
the fees which he pays, I am telling you, it's not the quantity. The fees which he pays, Ayya, you will be the most happiest person to give it than getting it from some Kurorpati. The Kurorpati will give it through his PA, writing in the valley, always asking for fees in Kurorpati. The happiest thing to happen, I saw one Chief Justice when he was retiring here, he came to tears, do you know for what? He said, I, I did a second appeal for this person. The second appeal was one. This person had brought the money in her sari, and she was taking it and you were struggling and she has given it like this. At the farewell address, the Chief Justice shed tears. They shed tears. I know. Justice, Justice Sahi. He shed tears. For what? For that small fees which he got from that uh, second appeal. From that. Please see what is remaining in his mind. He has done so much. He is such a big academician. He was, a, he was not an ordinary person. He was the Chief Justice of this great chartered high court. But see what comes out if, or comes out of him in a farewell speech. That fees from a client for whom he did that second appeal weeps. So, what is that success? That success is the one which is driven by passion and the one which makes you happy at the end of the day. If you are willing to do this, I am giving an assurance to everyone who wants to practice here that you will have a great practice. There is no way you will fail. There is no way you will fail. There is enough and more of opportunities for you to get into the profession, particularly the women lawyers. Last word for the women lawyers, don't think that your practice must be confined to family courts. This is, this is again a comfort zone problem. This is again a comfort zone problem. You may get into an office who are practicing more on the family side. Fine. It's your bread and butter. You have to, like what I have said, what they have read about me. I, I took every other case which came my, my side. I did it. It can be family court, it can be this, it can be that. I cannot afford to do, no? I have to try. At the end of the day, I have to pay the rent, I have to provide, I have to eat. So, but it does not mean that you will not get out of that comfort zone. You must do trial work. Whether you are taking the civil side, whether you are taking the criminal side, you must take the trial work and that is when you will really understand how this system works, how the judicial system works. The judicial system, if you want to understand, you should not be looking at High Court and Supreme Court. You should be looking at the lowest court, the Munsif Court, how the client comes, how he takes the, how you collect the brief from him, how you draft it, and how, how you build up that superstructure, and how all that ends. You will be able to understand only when you do the trial work. And the, the person who has done trial work is the person who can be called as a complete advocate. And therefore, I have said so many of such comfort zones and stumbling blocks and all that. You keep on breaking it. You will get into discomfort. Every time when you do it, it is discomfort only. It is not comfortable or jolly. It is discomfort. But by the time, I am now 53 years. When I look back at what all has happened, don't think that 53 is old, I am very young. Uh, don't start seeing me like a grandfather. No. I only want to say that I have some experience in life. But friends, those stumbling blocks really were not stumbling blocks. It has built a character. And today, in the midst of this crowd, and I am watching each and every one of the faces here. I have been able to engage you for this much of time without boring you. Which means that it has built a character to me. Thank you. Uh, session what we had now. 
uh, when lashes keep on talking, I just, it's an astrologic experience for me also. I started thinking about my practicing period. My first salary was 500, where my senior told keep it as an uh, conveyances. And uh, still, I remember the first case I won on behalf of legal aid, the third, because that is the thing, the very senior, he doesn't teach me, he made me to learn by myself. So he uh, took me to the legal aid authority and uh, enrolled me as a legal aid counsel. And I became a panel advocate of the legal aid. And for the first case, I, as because I attached to uh, so Famidasar office, it's a habeas corpus petition HCP. And I won the first HCP. And that too, that is a period of time where the entire court was on a strike due to this Madurai bench elevation. So even without hearing my argument based on the uh, drafting itself, uh, still I remember Justice uh, Sadasivam J has openly uh, mentioned in the court and he ordered that. Uh, I get only 150, I think so, that time that was the habeas corpus petition uh, remuneration given by the uh, legal aid. Still, I remember the client, uh, the person who from the prison who used to send me a letter that uh, so that is the, 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 these are all the things where we have to learn. Uh, still again, when I after, after I entered into my academics, when we are having the placement cells, when we share the uh, uh, offers from the internship offers or something, the first question which has been faced by us from the students is that, ma'am, what is the package? So more than remuneration, now we started uh, heard about this package also. So this is all the life learning messages. Uh, from senior uh, senior persons where they are experiencing. Lord uh, another one more witness. Uh, this student is from School of Excellence in Love who, who registered for this, but due to his health reason, he could attend this program. But he wants to hand, hand over this testimony to you because he missed this session and he wants to show his uh, gratitude and love and affection towards this. So I could not read this entire. I just handing over this letter to you because I sent it to the previous. Now the session is open for uh, interaction. I, I think I. I Two things which I did not touch, which I am sure that I touch, it is the firm culture. I, I, I think I just spoke about the individual practitioners. Firm culture, I don't know, meaning I was not in a firm, so I do not have the first hand experience. But there is one advantage in the firm culture, your monthly salary is assured. Your, because there, they talk in terms of salary, uh, even when they do the uh, uh, the uh, the selection which happens during the final year, uh, they talk in terms of package, correct? Yes. Sir. Am I right? Yes. Sir. Package, which means that the the incentive or the stipend has now sort of changed and has become a package today. To that extent, you will be treated like a workman only. You will be treated like an employee only. Because for them, yearning is more important. So you have to learn, you have to do it on yourself. But I would say that there, is, there should not be any hesitation to join a firm because ultimately, if you are able to learn something from them and you don't steal clients from them, this is yet another problem which happens. This attitude of stealing clients from seniors, stealing clients from firms, just because you are desperate to somehow in a longer run, run, it will finish you off. I know persons who are very successful, but initially they did this. Till today, whenever the topic comes, the first thing they do is, and the client is no, no, no. In spite of all their performances. <laughs> so, never ever uh, get into that particular area. It will, it, don't compromise on values. If you compromise on values, you do not know when it will come and stare at you. Probably at the time of elevation when your name goes, it will come and stare at you. Till then you may not even know that you have done something like that. I know people for whom it has happened. They will be very successful. Everybody will be thinking that they are going to be elevated. The file does its round. So it goes to so many places. They enquire so many people. Somebody will say, you know him. This is what he did. Finished. The file is gone. So you do, if you have not maintained that virtue, some day it will come and stab you very badly and you will feel very bad. So don't compromise on that. This is one thing which I thought I left. Yes, now you can. If you want to interact, unless I am getting into your... Uh, yes. Yes, yes. 
Sir, I'm Bangaji from Pondicherry Government Law College in LLM first year, sir. So we have a very wonderful, interactive and informative session. Thank you for the session. Sir, I have one question. Sir, is it possible to do the profession without uh, telling a single lie? Uh, see, one thing is to not to talk about something. Other thing is to completely lie before the court. Uh, let me give you an example. A criminal case comes to you, right? After the criminal case comes to you, what you do as a defense lawyer is that you keep on seeing what the prosecution is trying to project. And wherever you have points for defense, in order to effectively uh, defend the rights of the accused person, you do it. Probably inside you may know that something else has happened. But the one advantage as an advocate is that you don't judge. You go by what your client is saying. You are a representative of your client. You are not a judge to sit, then you will have to become a judge. If you are an advocate, as much as possible, you must see that you defend your client. But at the same time, you are also the officer of the court. So, at the cost of your client, if you try to do something in the court, the problem is that again in a longer run, people will brand you as this type of lawyer. And that actually has a serious impact on the credibility of the person before. So do not judge while, while talking with the client as much as possible try to get the facts. And as much as possible advise him correctly. And thereafter just defend for your client. Don't do anything more than that. Don't judge whether he would have done the murder. Then you cannot practice at all. Thank you, thank you. Yes, next, just raise your hand so it passes on the mic. So then, do again. Okay. One, two, three, four. I think I'm encroaching into Balaji. Okay, so we can. Uh, one, two, three, and yourself. You are the last. Good morning, sir. I'm Charmati from Satyabama University. So, as being a first-generation lawyer, how did you maintain the social discomfort, sir? Because. Uh, uh, female or male, I am just thinking about as equality. So, how did you maintain the social discomfort and how did you maintain the mental stability, sir? Because in that period you will have to face more and more, right? So, so the first trick I did was in my marriage, I, I ensured that there was no problem there. Then comes the, uh, the leasing part, correct? The first lease which I took was my wife's sister's own flat. So there was no problem on that also. Of course, I was paying the monthly rent. But they believed that since my wife is with me, I will not cheat. So that was the next advantage which I had. Then from there, I earned uh, decently. Then I got into my own flat. In so far as the practice is concerned, I never had an office. For most part, till at least 2003, I was asking my clients to come only to the Advocate Association. I used to sit in the association, I used to call them, get the notes, there will be typist all around the chamber, dictate it then and there. So, it's a struggle, it's, it's not that easy, it's not, uh, it's not as if you will get an air condition office like that. But if you have the passion to do it, then you will keep on doing it, there is no problem at all. People will say, you nalla panna. That is enough for a week. For one week, that is enough. Correct? So, uh, so this is how I managed it. It all depends on how it, it pales for each person. How it is going to happen for each person. I cannot really say how you will be able to manage it. It is for you to do it. That is why I am saying, you will have to break barriers. You will have to somehow manage it. There is, there is no shortcut method. If you adopt shortcut method, will become a fraudster. So there is no shortcut method here. At the same time, you must be willing to tolerate the discomfort. Probably it will take 35 years, 40 years to settle down. I am telling you, you should know that all these things will happen. But I am sure that if you are able to withstand it till then, then year more now. Adhikaprama, you will not be deprived at all. Sometimes you will say, please take this case to somebody else. Please ask them. No, I am not lying. I, please take it. Probably you will be helping a junior by giving a case. 
you do this case. Because at that stage you are so busy with some high, high level cases and some important cases, you will not find the time where you can help a person to get that sustainability. You will have to, it has to happen and you will have to tolerate it because we are the cause for the type of respect which we are getting in the society. We have to blame ourselves. There is no use in showing X and Y. We all belong to the same family of advocates. So if something bad has happened, the family has to take uh, the responsibility for it. So as future advocates, it is for you to change this perspective. People must think that because the advocates used to rule this country, almost all great freedom fighters were all advocates. The, the constitution makers, the, 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 the people who were in the assembly, people who were in the parliament, everybody was an advocate only. And advocates were given so much of respect. For some reason it came down. But life is not only this, life also takes this. So it is in your hands and how you conduct yourself. But if you have earned a name like that, that this person is not like that. And the society immediately will recognize it. If that happens, then nobody hesitates to have relationship. I'm Harini from Government Law College, Coimbatore. I'm a first gen generation lawyer and I'm very much passionate in practicing in the field of labor side. One of the big hindrances I came across in the uh, past eight months uh, being a junior practitioner, uh, I saw uh, that I, my native is Tirupur, where there are a number of Sai Patrais and so many things. Um, when I get inside the factories, I get to know there is no proper infrastructure which was provided to the laborers. Yes. Then I asked the laborers, they have a number of legislation which was given to that are beneficial legislation, but you doesn't know anything. Uh, I told them many things, but they are not even ready to file a case or against their uh, companies. Uh, but I want to stand for them and for defend for them, but they are they are not ready. I don't know where to start. See, the, that's why if you had carefully watched the Honorable Justice Indra Banerjee addressing, there is something called as a public interest litigation which has come in. So wherever you find that see, laborers and the ordinary workmen, they cannot afford to knock the doors of the court and sustain that fight. At the end of the day, you must eat. See, I am talking so decently with you because my If you leave me like this for four days without giving me food, you will find a completely different ornamentation. Very indecent person. Correct? I will do anything for that food. Just put yourself there. It involves his livelihood. So for him, he thinks that whether I should fight or whether I should tolerate all these things for my livelihood, most of them will only opt for livelihood. Correct? It's a, it's a human tendency. So when you find something like that, and you find that it, it not only causes injustice to them, it also causes injustice to the environment, public interest litigation is always there, and there are advocates, and there will be resistance on that, there will be threat on you. There will be people who will be trying to come and uh, give you money not to prosecute. All those things will happen. Society is a, is a combination of all these things. So if you are very passionate about all these things, very good. Very good. But be ready to fight. Be ready to fight. If you are ready to fight, somewhere you will be recognized. My Lord, I am Kartika Soil. Soil. So I have a doubt that I am a first generation lawyer. How to choose a senior's office? Because many people will give advice that you can do internship for uh, AGPs or GPs or judges. Mm. Then how to choose a senior's office for groom ourselves? One pattern did you see? Questions are coming only from first generation lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> My advice will be that you will have to get into an office who do trial work. There is no use in getting into AGP office, GP office, AG office. I am not undermining anybody. You will not be really able to learn the fundamentals of law. Law is all about fundamentals. If you are strong on fundamentals, you can manage any branch of law. Any branch of law you can manage. So you get into a GP's office, AGP's office, or Advocate General's office. What is the paper which you read? There is a petition filed by them, there is a counter filed by him. You are not going to address in the court. And you are going to just see what is happening in the court. And that does not concern civil procedure court, criminal procedure court, or any other substantive laws. Correct? If that happens, what is that you learn? 
so if you want to if you are genuine if you want to learn please choose an advocate's office where they do trial work that is where you will learn fundamentals you will get a lot of idea about how you will proceed further with your practice hello sir sir i am vijay from bharat university and my question is about the writ petitions this was uh, uh, the constitution has said that the writ petition the high court and supreme court has the power to give uh, the inherit the writ petition but uh, what is my doubt is why the district court didn't have the writ petition see basically uh, there is a long history to it for shortage of time i am just telling this it's the constitutional courts which alone are given this power of issuing the writs for the high court it is given under article 226 of the constitution for the supreme court it is given under article 32 of the constitution for the supreme court it has been confined to only those infractions to chapter 3 of the constitution of india which touches touches upon fundamental rights only if that 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 infraction is there they entertain for 226 it is not confined only to fundamental rights it extends to all enforceable statutory rights also so the reason why this writ is given writ remedy is given only to the constitution court is that it's an extraordinary jurisdiction it's an extraordinary jurisdiction which is not found in any statute book it is found in the very bible which is the constitution of india which gives that power so once the power is given then the jurisdictions which have emanated from the english thing the sarsorari the madam as the co warrant to the habeas corpus those which are issued so it's a jurisdiction conferred by the constitution therefore it is only the high court and supreme court which are it so this next the two more this one and that one already i'm feeling uncomfortable looking at my brother yes yes no no actually yes ashmit neither in from chekna i i expected this that's that, that that's the issue yes i'm ashmit neither in from chekna school of law and uh, my question is according to theory of powers uh, judiciary is uh, separated from executive as well as uh, legislative Correct. so but in india why the judges are being appointed by the president even chief justice of high courts and supreme courts are also appointed by the president why is it so okay see basically division of power is actually not division of power it's actually division of functions division of power is never that it is division of functions we derive all that from the american constitution if you read the papers of madison he would have dealt with this very issue itself where he will say that we are talking about division of power there is no division of power it is a division of function so the function of each organ namely the judiciary executive legislature it must not transgress one another it must not transgress one another they judiciary cannot involved in involved in law making legislature cannot involved in executive action executive cannot perform judicial action so if you look at article 50 of the constitution of india which falls under chapter 4 of the directive principles of state policy it very specifically says that it must be separate the person involved in executive function if he trenches upon a judicial function and somehow that power is given to him recently we have written a big judgment on that i don't want to go into that so it is it is it is it is the, the this division which will ensure that the each organ is having that power to check the action of the other action of the other so for a high court judge let me say you this we are not paid salary we are not paid salary we draw our salary there is a big difference between somebody paying the salary we draw our salary from the consolidated fund which means that we do not have anybody like an employer or some appointment authority nothing our powers are all in the constitution so the 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 issuance of a warrant is more as an acknowledgement to have some piece of paper to know that you have been elevated as an high court judge or a supreme court judge so therefore it comes from the highest person namely the president of india who has been conferred the first position in our constitution he is the highest authority in the constitution so constitution makes that authority to issue this warrant it is called as warrant of appointment it is not appointment order it is warrant of appointment so 
That is the reason. So there is no appointment, there is no paying salary and all. That's why Justice Indra Banerjee said that the independence is ensured by giving a security for your tenure. You cannot remove a high court judge or a supreme court judge that easily. Reason is you will have to function fearlessly without getting bothered about somebody else's pressure. Yes, anything else? Last one, large, but three more are there. We'll ask them to come and contact each other. Oh, okay. Sir, sir, very good afternoon, sir. Yes. I'm Sahun Darya from Satya Vama. Mm. After this motivation session, I broke out from my bubble and I'm asking a question. So, how to choose our career, sir? Like, one day I'm thinking I want to write a judicial exam, mm. and another day I want to do practice. And mm. which side I have to choose my practice? Actually, many interns who came to me, there are lots of interns who have got this. Uh, this energy from me and they have decided what they have to do in life. There are many interns who had this problem. When they enter into my chamber on the first day, I will find that confusion in their face. I will not impose anything on them. 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 Meaning, the last thing they would expect is the judge asking about what is the to the intern. But I will intentionally do it. And I will slowly get into their mind. And I will understand them. At one stage, they will say, uh, I didn't have an intention to practice and all that. Uh, now I feel that I can at least write some exam to become a judge. They think that they can become a judge and all. They don't know the headache of this place. <coughs> it, it, it is very good from outside. Only when you get here, you know what torture it is. Anyway, I am not saying it. I am driven by passion. So I am very happy to be a judge and performing as a judge. So don't get me wrong. So you will have this confusion to start with. There will be no clarity at all as to what you do because there is no visibility. No, It's not as if I complete this, then I get into a job, then so much is paid to me, this is my promotion, from here I get into the next. These are all comfort zones. Please do not expect comfort zones in this profession. There is nothing called as comfort zone here. So, it is very difficult to take a call. So, at least practice for three years. What I, what I feel, this is my personal opinion, is that never get into the judiciary without practice. Because you will never know the difficulties of an advocate. And you will find it from judges who are sitting in the constitutional court. You will find that the appreciation of a, of a judge who came from the bar and the appreciation of a judge who came from the judiciary, lower judiciary, will be very, very different. The reason is this. The reason is that persons who come from the bar have seen what problem the bar is facing, what the advocates go through, what difficulties they have faced. So, please practice for three years. You will get a visibility. And I, I wish that you become a senior advocate or a high court judge. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for an enlightening speech. Uh, kindly ignore our uh, excuse our ignorance. It's not. It's, we are not a, uh, fit enough to give a certificate, but it's a, it's a small uh, uh, appreciation or an affection on our side.